So for number one, we just want to check whether these propositions are true or false. So for A, 11 is a rational number. Um, we do just have to remember the definition of a rational number. So N belongs to the set of the rational numbers if, if there exists uh, integers A, B. So A, B belonging to the set of integers such that n is equal to a over b. So 11 is clearly equal to 11 divided by 1. Um, 11 and 1 are both integers, integers, so this does fit our definition. So true. What about b? 5 pi is a rational number. Well, pi, we cannot express pi as the quotient of two integers. Um, there are some, some divisions that are good approximations, um, which I believe the Babylonians knew, but uh, no, we, we can't express pi as an exact ratio, right? So if we can't express pi, we also can't express 5 pi. So this is, this is false. Um, what about C? There are exactly three prime numbers between 40 and 50. So we're going to write these down. Um, all the numbers, and we're going to skip the even numbers because we know that the definition of an even number is that it's divisible by 2, so not prime. Um, so we have 41, 43, 45, 47, and 49. Now, any number that ends with 5 is a multiple of 5, so not true. Uh, and 49 is a multiple of 7, it's 7 times 7, so we're left with 41, 43, and 47, which are in fact prime. So this is true. Uh, what about D? There are exactly five prime numbers less than 10. So let's write out these, um, these numbers, and then we'll check them one by one. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So now nine is not prime. It's three times three. Neither is eight, four times two. Seven is prime. So this is a prime. Six is three times two, so not prime. Five is prime, because remember that the definition of prime is it's only divisible by itself and one. Um, so prime, four, not prime, because it's two times two. Three is prime. Two is prime, because only divisible by itself and one. Um, now one is kind of tricky, because uh, it's divisible by itself and one, however, itself and one are the same thing. So because we require that those two be uh, those two characteristics be distinct things, um, it is not considered a prime number, so not prime. So therefore we only have four, and this is false. Um, 29 is a composite number. Well, this is um, this is false because it cannot be divided by any other number except 29 and 1. So this is false. Um, 0 is a natural number. This is also false because the natural number, the natural numbers are defined to be a set such that uh, it's equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. So 0 is considered part of the integers, not the natural numbers. So this is false. Um, what about g? 5 plus 2i times 5 minus 2i is a real number. Well. This is true because we do know that every number multiplied by its complex conjugate, so it has the same real part but opposite um, imaginary parts, is a real number. But just to, to prove that it's the case, we'll expand this. So this is 5 plus 2i times um, 5 minus 2i. So when we multiply this out, this is 25 minus 10i plus 10 i and then minus 4i squared. So these two, they cancel out. So this is just 25. Uh, and this is minus 4 times i squared, which is defined to be negative 1. So this is 25 minus, minus 4 times 1. So just plus 4. Therefore, it is a real number. This is true. And lastly, 18 is a multiple of 12. Well, we do have to remember the definition, right? Um, <clears throat> so... Uh, we can say that a is a multiple of b if there exists um, exists n such that um, b is equal to a n. 
So where n is, is the, the multiplier, right? Um, so uh, we can say that... Oh, sorry, I mixed this up. It's the inverse. So a is equal to bn. Yep. Yeah. So a is a multiple of b if there's a number such that b times n is equal to a, right? So a has to actually be um, <clears throat> uh, an integer times times b. So this is, there's no integer um, that, you know, you can multiply 12 to get 18. So this is false.